Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to do an unboxing. For those people that think that I mistyped it and said 288, they're wrong. This is a 268 in a box. Let's have a look. So I don't need any more chainsaws. I really have no need. James and Jesse, good. Um, I really have no need for the saws that I have. Um, so I definitely don't need any more. So the only ones I consider getting would be something that would be darn close to a steel. Right? It's got to be good. And it's got to be a steel. Greg Beeman, welcome. So got to be good, got to be a steel, right? Got to be like just cherry and a steel. So I am going to unbox this right for the very eyes. And see how I did. I don't know. It's a big box. Let's see. And I will tell you the story in a minute. But here we go. So this just came via FedEx today. No, this is not the 288 that I'm waiting for. Um, according to Canada Post, their investigation will be done early June. Yeah. And right now, some of you are like, what? Early June? And James, you, you tell those doctors to get on the stick and uh, let's get you out here to the get together, you know? Anyway, so the, so the 288 is not coming for a while, if at all. I would say it's ex effectively, exceptionally unlikely that it shows up. I will say, whoever packed this, this is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Very nice. So it's going to do all paper. I don't know. I'm going to have to save the box and the packing material, though. That's a lot of bubble wrap. Now, this is not as heavy as a 394, so it's less money to ship. I hope. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. I definitely don't need it. But every once in a while, you go on eBay and you find something, and you're like, ooh, that looks pretty nice. You know you know what I mean? Thomas Jung. Christmas comes early. I, I like the usual suspects. This is fine. If this is what I think it is, then I'll have done all right. But we're going to use this to uh, go over the Matteo philosophy you know, of life, the universe, and everything. 
And, uh, you know, I gotta have something to do on my day off. I know, I've got plenty to do on my day off, but for whatever reason, I don't feel like doing it. You know, just the way it is. Jeez, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> All right. So what do we have here? Now I am not super familiar with all these Husky Two Series saws. But what I do know is that this looks pretty darn good. Let's click. That's a really short throw. But okay. So let's look at some things. Like, what's an indication of how much a saw has been used? Usually the first thing I look at right here. Has this guy thrown the chain any? I don't think so. What's that? Looks like there's fur in there. There's barely been a chain on this. You can see a few marks on the sprocket. Rivets in there. This is basically unused for all intents and purposes. The saw is a little dirty. But for a lot of intents and purposes, this saw is unused. So, I mean, look at this. The paint's mostly intact. Right, no paint missing from the front of the case, right? Let's look, let's look at that. Any paint missing from the front of the case? A little bit of bubbling, a little scuff here. This looks like it's moved. Somebody tried to take that apart. Somebody pulled the muffler. Somebody pulled the muffler and didn't put it back right. I mean, it's dirty underneath. But as far as saws go... So, like I said, you know, I don't really need... Um, another saw, but this one was really kind of in too nice a shape to pass up, especially when some, you know, somebody makes a mistake on eBay and they put it for buy it now. And John Tobin trade you an equally clean two six six for it. No, I didn't. I didn't spend fifty bucks. Let's try a hundred and fifty bucks plus shipping. And I guess they, I think they had like $45 for the shipping and the, they actually refunded me 20 bucks because <laughs> I think it was just up in Massachusetts. Is it crack or a scuff? Just a scuff. Possibly nothing it comes off. So... Still have the lines on here. The paint, or not the paint, the plastic's a little faded. Do we have all the starter screws? Ah, we're missing a starter screw. Crap. Crap. Obviously, it's missing the starter handle, so I can't start it. Or test compression. At least not right this second. But this is in sick shape. I mean, this is just... That's quite nice, you know? 
the thing is, like, I'm sure there'd be a lot of guys who are like, hey, let's just start it, you know, see if it runs. That's not me. Matt, I heard if you fell out a top floor window. If you fell out a top floor window, you lit on soft mattresses on the roof. <laughs> pull the muffler. I'll pull it. Don't worry. Pull cord. It could be seized. You know, who knows? Starter screws on titanium. The starter screw is probably not on titanium, but getting the same ones all to match, probably not. I think, like, Husky 55 screws probably work, and I think they're still made. So, um... And of strange coincidence, the parts that I just bought for the 288, I bought starter screws. So they'll probably work fine. Um, but it's a good point. Is it seized? So let's pull it apart, you know? Let's, let's, let's pull this thing apart. Got to get some, uh, some tools over here to start taking this thing apart because I'm not the type of guy just to see if it runs. That's not me. This saw is getting torn down. Um, at least partially because that's just part of, you know, build philosophy. But partly because it's old. And that's the phone. Hang on a second. I'll, let me get some tools. I'll be right back. You know, I'm so doggone excited about this. I totally forgot to bring you guys up on the phone here, on the other phone. So, uh, I'm gonna just put this down here, whatever. Let's do that. Just a spam phone call. So let's see what you guys are saying. I gotta look on this other phone. Okay, we're tearing down a saw, guess what we need. Metal triangle, what is that? Fourteen people here. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it could be straight gas. Could be straight gas. That's the that's a good thought. So the, this was on eBay. The seller, who was in Massachusetts, said this is a barn find, and basically they didn't do anything to it. They just they took it. It was on a shelf. They took it off the shelf, threw it on eBay. So I think that that's... I, I, and, they, and they threw it on eBay, and they put it on eBay for too little money, I think. But, the the two, David, the 288 is still stuck in limbo. There is no update except for the fact that the, the investigation uh, ends, um, ends in June. I don't know, but these original bands might be might be on obtainium. But look, is this darn clean or what? You still got the rivets here, and that's like had no. I mean, it's no rash, zero. There's no rash on that. Great. Now I have a box to put this in. I guess I'll, I'll use the box that came in. I think you get a box for all the 
parts, you know? Yeah, the, the 288 is, is stuck in limbo and ends in, uh, the investigation ends in June. Look at this, guys. Is this a killer deal or what? Well, they're, they're trying to find what happened to the package, James. Um, they're trying to figure out what actually happened to the package. They don't know. Yeah, the muffler looks like it's not uh, not on there fully. But we gotta we gotta tear this thing down. Yes, I know it deserves its own box. You're right. You're right. When you're right. You're right. Let's take the top cover off. I get hasty here, fellas. Too big. I think this deserves its own fresh and new top cover screws, too. These look a little tired. Yeah, this, you're right. Somebody, you know, they, they might have busted the pull cord on this and, uh, it's either straight gassed or the pull cord was just busted, and that's why it ended up on the shelf. We're going to have to have a closer look at that uh, sprocket there, because it looks like it wasn't hardly used at all. A little dirty inside. Clean that up. Do these fall out? There's captured, there's all captured, 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 so I don't have to worry about them. That was a little loose, so, you know, it's always, that's a BPMR 6A, usually use the 7s. High idle set. Yeah, so it still sets high idle fine. Wouldn't it be cool if this is one of the closed port heads? That would be pretty cool. millimeter screws to pull off the handle. Barry, is this uh, what you're talking about? The fact that it says XP? Where's the schmutz in the flywheel cover? We'll look. Let's let's pull the uh, the muffler because it's mostly off anyway. Looks like I'm 
missing a muffler bolt. Oh, there's a metal gasket on here. But no heat shield. The moment of truth. Scored. Not badly buggered, but scored on one side. So something's up inside there. Is it seized? Find out right now. Mm, come on. I'll bet it stopped running because of the score, for some whatever reason that was, and then somebody broke the cord and called it a day and put it on a shelf. And said it's a piece of junk. I'm not using that saw anymore. That's probably what happened. Starter screws. Cord's still pretty long. Spring still works. Clean it and put a new cord on it anyway, of course. Don't worry about that later. Not seized. Seems to run pretty smooth to me. No play there, no, no obvious play anyway. Single ignition. Wow. That's all credit up. I'll just fill that in with epoxy. That way it doesn't get all credit up. Extra for schmutz removal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so so far I need at least a new piston. Oh. Son of a gun. I've got like 20 of them here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we're just going to put that back for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> right, let's get rid of this the muffler. Full autopsy. Yes, we're going to do a full autopsy on this. Washers.
No, Ken, you haven't lived until you've cleaned out a 20-year-old abused saw. Well, you learn so much, you know. Should I just pull the flywheel while we're at it? This thing is getting torn down. So, you know, down it goes. See how easy this is to get off. <clears throat> Blaster. About even with the crank is good. Now, this is definitely not the best way to get this off, but it certainly is a way. And since I'm going to be changing the bearings anyway, I'm not that worried about it. Try to lift up by the heaviest part of the flywheel. Definitely ain't working as good as I'd like. Some of these are hard to get off. It ain't coming, boys. Probably one of the hardest flywheels I've had yet. That ain't working. I I know you need a puller. Guess what I don't got? All right, next. Do it the old fashioned.
forget the washer that's underneath these. Won't even go with the heat to it. Hey, Ellie. How's it going? You know what? Let's just take out the washer. That would make more sense, right? I don't think I've ever had a flywheel this hard. Some of the 394 flywheels are hard. I don't think I've had one this hard. Is it full of fuel? It better not be. Yeah, that just cracked, so we need a new, uh, new O-ring here. Stay on the fuel tank. Patience, yeah, I know. No such a thing as patience. Ah, oh, my ears.
It ain't going, gentlemen. I've never had a flywheel this hard. It's never, never happened. Walk away, come back fresh. Get out the air hammer. Maybe. I can use the air hammer. Check for rags. Barry, again, I, I've had 394s that are, you know, that are hard. They have almost exactly the same flywheel. I think the 394 flywheel is a little bigger. But it's basically the same exact configuration. And uh, I have not had one that's this hard. Yeah, there's two, there's two drilled and tapped holes, so I could I could effectively make a puller. Yes. I, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Could have had the whole saw broken down for, for you know, by now. Done. Well, that nut's done. Flywheel's fine, just gonna put it down. Visually, I don't see anything wrong with the seal. Some of the stuff away with them. Need any more? A little light. Got any new crank? Hopefully not. I don't think so. Did you get that plastic transmission repaired? No. Let's see. We can get the clutch off. The clutches are notoriously difficult too. Yeah. 
Yep. Got it. Just with a breaker bar. Nice. Basically a new clutch. Man, I could part this saw out for some good money, huh? Yeah, can you guys see this? Like, how little wear? bearing in there. It's got all the needles. No, I'm not going to part it out. No, you're right. If I had to guess, this got a little hot because there's some plastic here. There's a washer there, which I didn't know about, but there's plastic here. Maybe something got a little warm. Seal looks a little funny. Could it have been the seal? See, this seal looks a little funny. Needs a new seal. That's fine. Get the oiler off. I'm not worried about getting stuff in the bearings because I'm just going to replace them. Four position adjustable oil pump. Yeah, right here.
just looking at this. This seal looks like it's driven about a millimeter beyond the face here. I doubt that it was effective anymore. The X-ring is still there. The bearings look um, tired. Clean that out. So, Nikki, you're not a fan of the uh, oiler adjustments? I guess. On this stuff? I guess we'll pull off the uh, dog here. Dog? Look at the dog. That's loose. That's not a surprise. This one's probably not. Two interior case bolts, a little bit on the longer side. Flats out, welcome. Heat on the nut on the crankshaft, then hit it with deep creep like magic. See from deep creep. Okay. I'll look. Hey, gummy. Yuck. Yuck. Might as well start undoing case bolts. Lucky that I got that one. Pull the interior bolt here. The AV bolt. The AV bolts are pretty short. Dumb thing is, I might actually have a case gasket for this. I don't know. And more importantly, have the O-ring that goes on here. I might actually have them. Those O-rings are impossible to find, maybe.
Hopefully not. Last time I looked, I didn't really have a problem, but who knows. All right. So this side is pretty well undone. The AV mount screw. One, two, three here. screwdriver there's one over here too wow I guess let's get into the intake here. Hey, look, no filter. That dirty. We'll clean that. Four screws here for that. Chris Kringle, welcome. Pop out the choke here. Hmm. Could not possibly imagine that these are easy to find, but who knows. This rubber is shot. Well, looks like there's a screw that backed out of the carburetor here. That might be why it scored. There's a main screw here holding the carburetor on that looks like it came off. The 
this rubber is all gummy and gross and disgusting. All right. That may be why the whole thing cooked. Yeah, I want one. Everything else seemed to be tight, so I'm not convinced that somebody went in and tried and, uh, and undid this screw specifically to try to repair it, you know? Hey Larry, am I going to make it better than stock? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just taking this apart, you know, for you guys. You guys know that I don't know what I'm doing. Why doesn't this want to move? Pull this out, I guess. Pull this adapter piece off. Keep pulling this big carburetor screw. There we go. Aha. Ooh, corroded. Mill Dewey. Mike could need a carburetor kit, you know? <laughs> Great, now where does this thing go? Maybe that went over there. That's a washer for that. Okay. Gotta have metal trays. We're dismantling a 268 XP. How much do you want for that one hundred dollars <laughs> saw? I don't know, man. I don't know if I can get it running. Well, on the other hand, I might get it running today. I don't know. If I can turn this into like a regular old fuel line. This just come off. Please tell me. Please come off. Please just come off. Please come off. Yes. Okay. See, this is not like the fuel line loose like that bad. That bad. But we're going to put that to the side for the moment. I think all these are all the AV mounts intact. Not 
torn or nothing. The vent is a little pushed out. Let's see if we can push that back in. Maybe you don't need to leave it. Okay. I'm going to need a fuel thing there, and I need a fuel line, which I may or may not have. I don't know. I don't know what I have. You know, I, I do have some. 272, 268 stuff sitting around, but is it just me or is that like a really clean filter? It's just this rubber is all gummy. The rubber's done. Okay, put this down, put it down. A little concerned right now. Okay. Yeah. I get to get to get the head off. What are the odds here? Wrong one. Although that may be a good thing. Hang on. These are the 394 head screws, essentially. There's one. <laughs> There's two. Three. Closed port 268. Cheap power washer. <laughs> It would be nice to convert this to plain fuel line. I don't know if I can. Intake is good. Exhaust has some transfer to clean up. A really interesting lip. Gasket looks good. It was intact. This part looks good. This needs to be cleaned. Hey, Earl. Larry, I think I got lots of pistons for this saw, yeah. Oddly enough. Can I 
get the gasket off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Gasket's off. Well, there's an awful lot of cleanup here to do. I'll tell you what. Let's get the piston off here, though. Get this case split and get the darn bearings out, you know? Larry, believe me, I'm praying for your tax money. <laughs> I... The more uh, the more money Larry gets for tax money, uh, you know, the better everybody does. And by everybody, I mean me. One circlet. I think this was well on its way to being a long-lived saw if that uh, silly carburetor bolt didn't come loose. No, I think the bearings are good. I'll, I'll, I, they, it certainly, yeah, they feel fine. I'm going to change them anyway. Why not? Yes, put my 394 to the Larry test. Okay. I buy a piston. So now we got to split it. So yeah, John, the, the bearings I think are fine, but I'm not. I don't mess around with these. I just replace everything. The nice thing about the this saw, they're sixty two oh two bearings. They're not expensive. So you know, as you're taking a saw like this apart, you know anything gets down in there. Why would you risk it? You know, just put new bearings in. It's my opinion, you know, but it's kind of where I'm at. Get the splitter. Clean up here.
Yeah, I like to fix this so it's just so. You know? Might as well. So this is basically the Chinese version of the Husky Splitter, and it's got a little, a little of the old uh, Matteo modification. I added uh, some 5 8 threaded rod to this instead of the other junk. The re the rod is much more heavy duty, much heavier. But of course, if you forget a bolt, you're sunk. Forget a bolt. Bronze gear no has plastic. Actually, I don't need to put that away because. Devil, were they using for bar oil? Ugh. Ugh. Hello. Apparently, that was my local carpet cleaning company. I'm not here. Yes, you are. I forgot about the, uh, the Woodruff key.
I need an M10 die to clean up the threads. I don't think I have one. I have to order it. I think I got order. Whatever. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you need a new crank. Please hurry. <laughs> what do you mean hurry? You, you think I would get this done before six? I don't think so. I think the easy thing to do would be to get a different crank. I gotta go see what parts I have, clean this stuff up. Oh, I gotta get the bearings out of here. Right. Let's get the bearings out of these things and then we can go from there, I guess. Positioning pins are there. Sometimes tapping these in actually helps. One. Oh, the other one's already out. That's good. All right, so now I just need to get the bearings. All right. So what do I need to get for that? Hang on, I need more Kleenex. Hang on. What's your thoughts on do, doing the 393, 395 conversion of Big Borkan 394? Um, why would you be doing that? Do you, do you think you need the bigger bore for the 42-inch bar? I'd say get a different saw. You need you need different oiling if you're going to be doing you know doing that. And remember, I'm really not the guy to talk to if you're planning on doing chainsaw milling because I don't like it. You know, I, I'm I'm really not a big fan of chainsaw milling. I love chainsaws, I love milling, I don't love chainsaw milling. You, you can do it, but if you're just converting it for more pop, I, I, I don't know. I'm really not sure if that makes that much difference. You know what I mean? I, 
I think if you're looking to do a 42 or inch longer bar, really with chainsaw milling, you're looking at a bigger saw, i.e. a 3120. Or a double-ended bar, or some other type of custom setup type of thing. Three ninety fours are nice for what they are, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't push it. Above 250 is nice. Closer to 300 is better. Let it cool. Yeah, chainsaw milling is just a certified pain in the ass. That's what it is. And if you do bandsaw milling versus chainsaw milling, you'll realize that chainsaw milling is just a pain. It's it, it has its upside. There's no question uh, about that. But you know, the more juice you got, the less aggravating it'll be. Five hundred degrees, that's a little hot. I came back with 500. Anyway. Earl, I have a guy with a 72 and 3120. Yeah, you know. Six foot bar. Yeah. The right tools for the job. Alright, now I gotta go figure out what exactly stuff I have for this saw and what I need and all that. Well, the modern day, these. Do the, do the modern gas caps fit this saw, uh, guys? Do you know? It looks like it does. It sure looks like it does. I gotta go out to the barn and see what I got. Yeah, it, it looks like it, it, it does. Um, I gotta go out to the barn and see what I got. Gonna get the kids off the bus here pretty quick. So, I'd say let's... Uh, Call it a day. This has been fun. Hope you guys like the build.
Yeah, I gotta get out of here before uh, the rest of the family sees me. Well, James, I know that you want this off for yourself, so um, I guess don't tell the rest of the guys about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm really gonna do with it. Ultimately, again, I just kind of got it so you guys could uh, be jealous of something, you know. Glad you guys like it, and uh, Thomas John, John, you're very welcome. James, Chris, Nikki, Earl, Larry, everybody, thanks for watching. I will catch you later. I don't know if I'll come on later. Um, maybe, maybe not. Depends on how I'm feeling and what I actually have to uh, to work on this for parts, you know. Yes, I know, James, the 350 is all yours. Yes, 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 yes. All right, I'm going to go, and uh, we will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching and be safe.